This is Sindam Patel and welcome back to the video lecture series of the fundamentals of machine design. In this chapter, in this lecture, we are going to learn about the types of the key as this is the, uh, this is the chapter of the keys and the shaft and that's why it is very important to identify different types of the key in order to identify the uh, type of the examples. Okay, so first of all, we are going to discuss about the keys uh, which is the member uh, which uh, is used for the assembly and a key is a mechanical element is used on the shaft to secure the rotation so that you secure the rotations like the gear uh, pulleys sprockets and to prevent the relative motion between them so if you are mounting any component like the gear or the pulley or any any hub on the on the shaft like this if it is the shaft and this is the uh, component which is to be mounted on the shaft then the key will be an element which prevents the relative motion between them or we can say that if you want to uh, prevent the sliding motion of the hub sliding motion of the hub on the shaft then you must have to apply this type of a mechanical component on the uh, shaft in order to prevent this type of a unwanted rotation the keyway is a slot or a recess in the shaft or a hub uh, of the rotating element to accommodate the key so it is a slot uh, where, uh, into which we are going to insert the key into which we are going to insert the metal component so that we can uh, prevent this type of unwanted rotation so this is the basic idea of the key and now we are going to learn about the different types so, uh, classification of the key or the types of the key this type of a theories can be asked in your examination into 3 to 5 marks or 7 marks depending on the marks you will have to explain each and every components and uh, that's why it is very important to identify the content between uh, for the depending on the marks so first the classification uh, starts with the first type that is the sunk key the sunk key itself uh, a type of the key which in which there are different subtypes are available and the different types of the sunk keys are as follows the first one of the sunk key is the rectangular key where a cross section of the key is of the rectangular shape which is represented in this diagram where this is the shaft and this is the key and we need to uh, focus on the cross section of the key so if this is the key having the cross section of the rectangular shape then the rectangle must have its width and the height to identify or to uh, determine the dimension of the key so the width of the rectangle is d by 4 and the height of the rectangle is 2 by 3 into w so if you put the value of d by 4 into w in this w then you will get the answer of the height as a d by 6 so we can say that the width of the key is a d by 4 and the height of the key is d by 6 which is the generalized accepted proportion for the des design of the rectangular key so if you know the diameter of the shaft then you will be able to calculate the dimension of the cross section of the rectangular key the rectangular key is inserted into the shaft like this the two different views of the rectangular key into the shaft are represented in this diagram similarly to similar to the rectangular key we will see another type of the sun key that is the square key the square key the name itself indicates that the cross section of the key is square so if the cross section is square then we can say that the width and the height of the cross section will be equal so w equals to h that is equals to d by 4 and uh, we don't have to calculate the h from the w using the d by 6 equation the both uh, width and the height will be the same for the cross section square okay similarly there is another type of a sun key that is the parallel key the parallel key may be of the rectangular shape or a square cross section shape but it is compulsorily taperless the above two keys may be of the uh, uh, above two keys may have the taper throughout its length to accommodate the different diameters outer diameters of the hub or the mating components but the thing is uh, if you if you are using the parallel key then there is a compulsion that you must have to provide a taperless key with any cross section whether it is a rectangular cross section or a square cross section so a parallel key can be anything a rectangle or a square but it must be a taperless now we are going to see another type of the sun key that is nothing but the give head key so this is the different modification that we have provided into the key to for the easy removal and the insertion of the key 
so as you can see the key give head is having the head uh, at the end of the key uh, which is uh, which looks like this and the give head key in the 3d or the isometric view uh, can be draw like can be drawn like this so you can have the idea about the give head and the give head proportion can are also fixed but we don't have to uh, dig into that much deeper deeper theory and that's why we are saying that the give head can be any key as a rectangular key with the head at one end as shown as a give head so the head of the of the one end must be of the give head and the proportion for the give head can be found in the reference book like the rs kurmi okay so it is usually provided to facilitate the removal of the key or the insertion of the key so if you want to insert or remove the key with the help of the head then you must go for the give head key so this was the one type of the sunk key now we will see the last type of the sunk key that is the feather key the feather key is basically utilized for the uh, uh, attachment either to the shaft or the hub of the rotating element which relative rotary motion is prevented but a slip uh, per permits a relative axial motion between the shaft and the hub so if you want to have a axial relative motion between the shaft and the hub then you must go for the feather key this type of a feather key is either connected with the shaft or connected with the hub so if it is connected with the hub then the shaft can easily uh, can move easily axially or if it is connected with the shaft then the hub can easily slide over the shaft and this type of a motion can be accommodated using this type of a key that is the feather key so this was the different types of the sunk key that we have already covered uh, up to this slide now we will see in the next slide a uh, woodruff key okay so this is the another type of the uh, sunk key a woodruff key is having the cross section uh, uh, cross section view uh, uh, like a cutted or the like a cut uh, part of the cut part of the disc or circular disc okay so if you want to see this type of a ring then the, you can see that this diagram where the cut portion of the uh, woodruff key is rep represented this type of a key is a segment from a cylindrical disc or it fits in a recess made in the shaft so the woodruff key find their application in the machine tools and automobile so there are different types of the advantages and the disadvantages of the woodruff key which can be asked in your examination into three marks a separate question may be asked of the woodruff key and in, in that particular answer you will have to cover the different advantages and the disadvantages so first of all we will see the first advantage that is that it accommodates itself to any type of the hub so it helps is use it is useful for the taper shaft so an extra depth of the in the shaft prevents any tendency to overturn so this is the main advantage of the uh, woodruff key it facilitates the easy removal of the hub from the shaft so if you want to remove the hub from the shaft easily then you can utilize the woodruff key the disadvantages of the woodruff key are the depth of the keyway is more and hence it weakens the shaft we all know that if you dig it deeper into the shaft or if you pro if you create the la larger slot into the shaft then the uh, strength of the shaft will be reduced and due to this re reduction into the strength uh, the shaft may weak uh, may be weak during the working condition and that's why whenever a strength is a critical criteria for the shaft then you must avoid this type of the key uh, where the strength could create a issue during the working condition so it cannot be used to transmit the high torque where the high strength is required now we have seen the woodruff key over here and now we are going to move on to our next type of the key or the next type where, apart from the sunk key that is the saddle key so the we have represented two different types of the saddle key in this diagram the first one is the hollow saddle key and the second one is the flat saddle key the hollow saddle key are generally applied or both the saddle keys are generally applied on the light duty application a keyway is provided only in the hub of the rotating element and the key is hollow uh, to fit on the shaft so as you can see this type of a key is most probably hollowed on the shaft according to diameter of the shaft and this type of a key is not hollowed or we may say that we have provided the flat surface to accommodate the key between the shaft and the hub 
now we will see another type of the key and that type of the key is the tangent key so the tangent key uh, is shown in the figure uh, which consists of the two tapered rectangular keys placed 90 degree apart so two different keys are placed 90 degree if you draw the axis of those key then the axis of the, that particular key would be at the 90 degree between them so if the axis of the two different keys are at the 90 degree then we can uh, use the tangent keys hence each key withstand torque in a one direction and the keys are used in a heavy duty application if your application demands for the more power to be transmitted from the same shaft then you can go for the tangent key with 90 degree angle if you are if you are not satisfied with the power transmitted with the key then you can dig more to to another key over here or at the end or on the on the second part of the uh, shaft or we can say that the downside of the shaft and it will improve the power transmitting capacity of the shaft so this was the tangent key that we have covered now we will see another type that is the round key the round key name itself indicates that the cross section of the key is round or circular so the cross section which is represented in this diagram is a circular or a round and this round key is inserted into the keyway uh, which was uh, provided into the shaft and the hub half keyway is provided into the shaft and the half keyway is provided into the hub now the advantage of this type of a key is a straight pin of the circular cross section fitted into the common hole drilled at the interference of the shaft and the hub so whenever when assembly is done uh, very difficult to mount on the shaft and uh, it, it becomes very difficult and fiddly uh, to uh, assemble the shaft on the particular mark then you must go for with this round key because uh, if this type of a key are even uh, uh, inserted into the shaft even after the completion of the assembly you can drill the hole or the you can drill the keyway even after the assembly is completed uh, the keyway will be in uh, uh, drilled with half on the shaft and a half on the hub so this is the main advantage of the round key now we will see the splines the splines are the more important type of the uh, key actually it is the shaft or the one type of the shaft where the shaft is uh, connected or a uh, integral part or uh, the keys are the integral part of the shaft we can say that the keys are connected with the shaft or made from the one uniform material as you can see there are number number of key uh, uh, integral with the part as we have our shoulder integral or our arm as an integral part of the body similarly the keys are integral with the shaft they are not connected or the con uh, joined with the different types of a joining methods whether welding or any other methods they were made integral to the shaft so if this type of a shaft is made then the, there will not be any requirement of the keyway or the uh, removal of the material from the shaft and that's why it will provide you the more strength or the more po power transmitting capacity for this particular shaft and that's why this is the end of our uh, spline keys and uh, with this we complete our theoretical portion of the key where the different types of the keys are covered in the upcoming lecture we will see the design procedure of the key because the key components will be utilized in the upcoming designs and that's why you will have to calculate the one step at least in each and every diagram uh, each and every uh, examples in the upcoming chapters and that's why you will have to understand the design procedure of the key basically there are two equations we will see those equation in the design section of the key in the upcoming lectures so we conclude our lecture over here Thank you.